Stratford, East London, home to the main park where the majority of the sports will take place during London 2012. Up to 300,000 people per day are expected to enter the Olympic Park during the 17 days of the Games. This is the scene outside the entrance to the Olympic Park and Westfield Shopping Centre. And despite the rain we've had here, you can see the, there's a real sense of urgency and excitement on the streets as people come and go to events. However, just a few hundred yards away at Stratford Old Town's market, the atmosphere is quite different. We are suffering around here, all the toys they are in Olympic Park, they're not doing anything for us. All the if you ask all the traders, they tell you the same thing that I'm telling you, they're not doing anything for us at all. The normal people like me in the street, we can get nothing out of this. They should have had it up in Farrak or somewhere like that, where, you know, there's hardly anyone losing that. And that's it. it would have, and also, they could have spent the money more wisely paying off our national debt. And tell David Cameron to get off his comfort zone and come around here and the other um, Robin Wells, tell him to walk around down in Stratford and have a look how it is. There's nothing here for us. A lot of the visitors are coming by London Underground. They go straight from the tube into the Olympic Park and don't necessarily visit Stratford Town Centre. Small retailers are competing with the new Westfield Shopping Centre, which is connected directly to the Olympic Park. But even those that do find the old town before going to an event are unlikely to purchase anything because of the park's strict rules. People aren't allowed to take anything apart from certain items over into the, into the, the Olympic Park. So people aren't buying before they go, and when they do come out, they're being shunted away. It's trying to get them out of the area as much as possible. So really, the only people who are making money are the fast food, food joints. And they told us to be prepared for it. People have ordered extra stock and everything, and it's just sitting there doing nothing. But while many small businesses are struggling, there has been a small upturn for Stratford's hotels, pubs and restaurants. I've got various business interests, including the market and the Queen's Head public house. But in the Queen's Head, we're, we're finding it's very good for us, actually, because we may welcome a lot of the overseas visitors, especially the Lithuanians. They've kind of adopted this as the Lithuanian house to meet. And we're doing very well. We're taking austerity to prosperity, which could only be good for our little local economy. Many people in Stratford were sceptical about London 2012 before it started. The atmosphere changed after the excitement of the opening ceremony, but the gold rush many of the local traders were hoping for hasn't materialised. And the excitement is subsiding. The hope now is that things will improve after the Games wrap up. There's, there's five to eight years of building work going to take place after the Games are finished. The selling off of the Athletes' Village to private dwellings. The Stratford International Business Centre is being created on the Olympic Park, hopefully creating 20,000 jobs, a lot of which will be local people servicing the needs of the office workers. There's two to 3,000 new dwellings being built within half a mile of the stadium. So Stratford, seven years hence, is going to be a totally different area than it is now, and it can only be for everyone. Long term, I'm sure it's going to be very beneficial for the area, but the short term, it's been a disaster. Yeah, shops aren't taking the money, and over the next two to three months, I'm sure some shops are going to find a struggle just to remain afterwards. The people of Stratford hope that the short term inconvenience to their daily lives during the Games will make way for a meaningful long term legacy after the Olympic Circus has left town. But in the meantime, many small business people here feel like there's a party on their doorstep, but they're not invited. Daniel Garahan, Financial Times, London.